Hello and welcome to Top Knot Education, where you get insight and summary into the chapter of a classic novel in under five minutes. Today we'll be talking about J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye, Chapter 4. When we last left off, Holden and Stradladder were talking in their shared dorm room. Stradladder has to prepare for a date, and tellingly, Holden follows him down to the bathroom. Holden claims he doesn't have anything else to do, but clearly he's excited by Stradladder and wants to be near him, unlike Ackley, who he wants to avoid. Holden admits Stradladder is handsome in a yearbook kind of way, but he notices that Stradladder is actually a secret slob. His razor is dirty, full of rust and hair. Stradladder asks Holden to do his homework in English composition. Holden calls this ironical, and it is if that were a word, because Holden never does his own homework and is being kicked out of school because of it. Holden doesn't commit to doing the work, but you can tell he's going to. In fact, for a guy that's chronically morose, Holden is very excited to be in Stradladder's company. He starts tap dancing and singing while Stradladder watches him. Then he jumps on Stradladder's back like a panther. That's a quote. Stradladder isn't in the mood to play around because he needs to get ready for a date. Still, Holden is energized by being around this phony secret slob. Another ironical aspect of Holden's character. That is, until he finds out who Stradladder is taking on his date. It turns out to be Jane Gallagher, an old friend to Holden's. Actually, Jane is a very important character in the novel, even though we never meet her. We can tell that Holden cares about her because of his strong reaction to the information and because he knows everything about her. She's got a Doberman, she's a dancer, her mother is bad at golf, her stepfather is weird and creepy, she plays checkers a certain way. Here's the checkers quote. Yeah, she wouldn't move any of her kings. What she'd do when she'd get a king, she wouldn't move it. She'd just leave it in the back row. She'd get them all lined up in the back row, then she'd never use them. She just liked the way they looked when they were all in the back row. Stradladder doesn't care about Jane at all, and likely isn't capable of caring about much other than himself. Interestingly, once the news of Jane breaks, Holden starts to echo Ackley. He sits on Stradladder's towel like Ackley sat on his bed, and he stands in Stradladder's light, the same thing Ackley did to Holden in the previous chapter. If we're establishing a spectrum and a hierarchy, these details help demonstrate where Holden sits on those lines. Holden learns that Jane is downstairs in the annex. He flirts with the idea of saying hello, but he won't do it. He's too afraid she'll ask how he's doing. He isn't proud of who he is, and he cares enough about Jane to care what she thinks. This is critical because Holden doesn't care what anyone else thinks about anything. If he did, he would follow Spencer's advice and, quote unquote, apply himself to school. Stradlatter keeps getting ready for the date. He uses Holden's hair gel, and he wears Holden's houndstooth jacket. He's also going out with Holden's girl. Salinger is making a pretty strong point. If Holden were to stop rebelling against the system, he could have all the things Stradlatter has. Holden would have to accept Spencer, Spencer's advice that life is a game and you've got to play by the rules. Stradlatter and Ossenberger are playing by the rules and they're being rewarded with wealth and women. They're not like old lumpy Mr. Spencer or ugly mossy toothed Ackley. In going on a date with Jane, Stradlatter has something that Holden actually wants. If the rewards are so clear, why can't Holden do it? Why not slide down the spectrum away from Ackley and towards Stradladder? And do we, the reader, even want him to? Or despite his handsomeness and success, is there something repulsive about Stradladder and something noble about Holden's quest to not be phony and to remain true to himself? Well, we'll get the answer to those questions, but we've got to keep reading first. All right, get to class.